come here to talk uh, about Italy as a place to be, where to live, uh, with a nice uh, lifestyle, and also Italy as a tax haven. Uh, this is a little bit astonishing. For many, many years, uh, I work uh, presenting Italy as the next Albion, because uh, uh, in the past, uh, Italy was really uh, a tax haven, especially for high net worth individuals not working in Italy. We have a, a very low level of taxation. Uh, we have no disclosure requirements. Uh, we have uh, basically no inheritance tax and no gift tax and uh, no disclosure, full confidentiality. Uh, however, uh, why people didn't join Italy at that time? Because uh, Italy was not perceived as a stable country with stable uh, legislation and with a clear uh, attitude of the tax authorities. Uh, after more than 20 years, uh, things uh, have totally changed. Uh, now Italy is a, a stable country. Uh, clearly, we have the election uh, this uh, May, May 2018, uh, but we don't expect major changes. Uh, legislation now is very clear. And what uh, is uh, very important is the attitude of uh, uh, the authorities and not just the tax authorities. Uh, the attitude is very proactive, is very business friendly, and aims at solving problem and uh, giving certainty. In the tax field, certainty, tax certainty is uh, a dogma and everybody is looking for tax certainty. For many years, uh, we said uh, legislation in Italy is good, but the application of the laws is very bad. Uh, now we can say that uh, uh, the application of the laws tend to be similar to the, uh, uh, to the law itself, and uh, tax authorities uh, really are very much committed. They realize what, what is the role of the tax authorities in the attraction of investment and uh, high net worth individuals. Um, I've been working uh, for 30 years now, I've never seen uh, people from tax authorities going uh, to London to present the tax regime, to meet with clients uh, and to commit themselves to put in writing what they promise, rulings that are transparent, official, and uh, uh, according to the uh, EU uh, rules. So this is uh, the, the basic uh, ground, background. Uh, and uh, uh, I really think uh, that uh, Italy uh, is uh, entering to uh, a new era uh, where uh, Italy is not uh, a nice place to be for lifestyle, for uh, you know, uh, history, for uh, culture, for food, uh, for uh, nature, but also in the tax field uh, and uh, justice, uh, a lot of other things have changed. But uh, we still have to grow. And in order to grow, we need uh, to attract people investment, especially from abroad. And the best way to attract people investment uh, is to attract uh, human capital. Uh, then we have a number of packages uh, that uh, want to attract people and organization, especially focusing on the impact of the Brexit. Clearly, Brexit uh, is a, a big deal maker. Uh, but uh, we are not uh, focusing on uh, people coming from the UK uh, only. We are focusing on high net worth individuals, and then uh, uh, here it's very important to mention that the set of laws is completely clear. We have the law, we have the implementing the guidelines, we have the circular letter, and we already got uh, the first uh, rulings uh, issued by the authorities. Uh, they are very quick, fast, uh, and uh, as I mentioned to you, proactive. And especially what is very important is that uh, there is no uncertainty. It's not, uh, I promise you will not do that. I promise you this uh, will not happen. We write. They write and they put in writing as a confirmation that this will be the situation for the future. We have a number of measures you may have heard of. Uh, some measures are meant to attract uh, uh, professors, uh, researchers, uh, managers of banks, managers of companies, especially in the financial industry leaving uh, the Brexit, but also we have a, a piece of legislation that aims to attract uh, high net worth individuals. 
basically what uh, we have done is that uh, we have looked at the legislation of foreign countries and we have cherry picked uh, the best or what we believe is the be are the best features of the legislation in the UK, in Switzerland and in other countries. As a matter of fact, uh, what we have uh, is that uh, for high net worth individuals, they can come into Italy, they can elect to pay for, for a maximum amount, uh, period of 15 years, uh, just 100,000 euro on uh, everything they have abroad. Uh, so they come with uh, 10 million, 100 million, 1 billion, whatever, we don't care. Then it's still on what they have abroad, uh, it's still 100,000 per year. And also what is very important is that uh, tax authorities do not require full disclosure of what they have abroad. So this is a matter of confidentiality that is very much preserved. Uh, and uh, we see that especially for high net worth individuals that want to come to Italy, and maybe they don't trust Italy because they look at, at Italy with the old eyes, not with the new eyes, uh, then the fact that they have not to disclose the asset uh, is a very important element. Obviously, if we wanted to attract uh, foreigners, uh, and especially people from non-EU countries, uh, we need uh, immigration visa. And then we have a fast-track visa procedure for investors and their relatives, and uh, like uh, the investor visa that we have uh, in, uh, that exists in some countries like the UK. So what's the rule is about? Uh, you know that uh, in the UK, for the res non dom uh, that elect to apply for remittance basis, they have to pay a certain amount of uh, pounds, and uh, 100,000 is more or less what they have to pay in the UK. 100,000 may be uh, high, may be low, then for high net worth individuals, uh, normally is nothing. For retired people, it's uh, really a, a lot of money. So uh, to compare uh, the 100,000 regime uh, with uh, the ordinary regime, uh, then to appreciate the 100,000 uh, rule, what it means it's important to understand what's the current regime. The current regime for Italian uh, rising individuals like, uh, like me, then we have to pay taxes uh, on worldwide income. We have to pay some taxes uh, on uh, uh, financial asset, 0.2%, which is high. And then we also to pay some taxes on real properties held abroad, which is 0.76%. If a pe person comes from abroad and enters into Italy and apply for this regime, then we have uh, on any foreign source income, we have zero income taxes. We have zero taxes uh, on foreign financial asset. We have no taxes on foreign real estate. So zero, zero, zero compared to full taxation, full taxation, full taxation. What is very important, and income can be remitted into Italy. Uh, I mentioned that because in the UK for many years, uh, income was not uh, eligible uh, for, uh, was taxable when remitted, uh, unless remitted for making certain investment. In Italy, we don't care. You, people can earn a lot of money abroad, they can get back uh, into Italy, remit, uh, can remit all the money in Italy, there is no further taxation. And second, uh, if uh, somebody has in mind the situation in Switzerland, people can come into Italy and do whatever they want in Italy. Uh, in Switzerland, you know, then if you want a for fair regime, you are not entitled to work in Switzerland. In Italy, you can work, and it's even better if you work, uh, than we want people to work uh, in Italy. There is only one exception, which uh, we cherry picked in the wrong way uh, from the UK legislation, that if people come with a qualified shareholding, say 100% shareholding, but or 20% shareholding in a company, and they sell it in the five year period, uh, in the first five years, they are taxable. It's very strange, uh, the reason for that. Uh, the circular letter says uh, is aimed at avoiding that people come into Italy, sell shares, don't pay taxes in the original state and they go abroad. Then uh, I would say first is the fair country that takes care of uh, evasion in other jurisdictions. I don't think that other countries would be so sensitive about Italian taxes. And second, uh, being an anti-abuse matter is subject to be disconnected. So we can apply to the authorities saying uh, we are within these rules, but there is no abuse, and please don't tax uh, even if uh, something happens like that. 
In any event, if I have a, my holding company in Luxembourg, I sell the holding company, I pay taxes in the first five years, but uh, if the Luxembourg company distributes dividends, there is no taxation at all, even in the first five years. So this is an exception, but not very relevant in practice and also based on the rulings that we already received and got. Somebody at the very beginning said 100,000 is really a lot, especially compared to Portugal and other countries. But uh, if we make uh, some, some uh, example, then uh, it's not for high net worth individuals. Then uh, we have uh, two columns. Uh, one column says uh, we have uh, almost uh, 14 million of assets under management, return of financial investment 2%. And this is uh, you know, a funny thing, because when we talk with lawyers, 2%, they believe is too high. When we talk with a private banker, they believe is too low. So it probably is the average which is right. And then uh, in that situation, we pay 100,000 euro on actual taxes if we don't apply the regime. So this is the break-even point. And uh, uh, this is quite important. For high net worth individuals, 14 million is nothing. And therefore, uh, we believe uh, that 100,000 is really low. But people say, OK, I come into Italy. I keep all my money abroad. I don't pay any taxes. But what if I make a gift? What if I die? And then here the situation. First, under Italian rules, inheritance tax applies at rates that range between 4% and 8%, depending on the relationship between the donor, the transfer order, the transferee. And there are a number of ways to get the exemption and under of exemption rules. But uh, people that come into Italy under the flat tax regime don't have to bother about that, because uh, the election for the special regime, the flat tax regime, allows a full exemption from gift and inheritance tax on all foreign assets. So people come in Italy, they have the money in a bank account in Switzerland, they don't pay any taxes uh, while they are alive, they don't pay any uh, estate uh, uh, wealth taxes uh, on uh, that uh, amount. If they make a gift, they don't pay any taxes in Italy. If they die, they don't pay any inheritance tax on that. So people say, good, this is, uh, this is good, but uh, uh, what if, uh, uh, what if uh, uh, people uh, uh, come to Italy and uh, do they have to disclose all the assets they have? And uh, uh, in principle, if uh, uh, Italian residents have assets abroad, they have to report in their tax return unless uh, they use financial intermediary base in Italy that uh, they are subject to report. But the tax authorities have a full picture of uh, our wealth. People that come to Italy are not subject to this reporting requirement. They can leave the money in Switzerland, don't pay taxes, uh, and uh, if they don't have any reporting requirement. What is funny, what is quite strange in a way, is that uh, People give a lot of value to the fact that they don't have to report the assets, but uh, they underestimate uh, the role of the common reporting standard. Then under the common reporting standard, information should flow anyway to the Italian uh, uh, government. Uh, the Italian government would take these uh, figures and say, I would, know, would not do anything because it's subject to the flat tax, uh, exactly as what happens in the UK under the regime, uh, the remittance basis regime. For people that really don't want to add the common reporting standard, they can decide to bring money, for instance, in the US. And we know that uh, money that is in the US is not subject to the common reporting uh, uh, standard communication under this report. <clears throat> for how long? 15 years. 15 years uh, is uh, quite a uh, uh, considerable number of years. So this is the maximum amount. But taxpayer can decide at any time to revoke it. So, if uh, somebody up for this regime is not obliged to stay in Italy for 15 years under this regime, can decide to go out after two years or even to remain in Italy and simply revoke. For instance, uh, a non-Italian comes to Italy, remains two years, very wealthy. After two years, make the uh, gift of uh, all his wealth uh, to relatives outside Italy and decide not to apply for the regime anymore. Clearly, we have no 
piece of legislation that says that uh, any future legislation cannot impact on that. So in principle, future legislation may change this regime. But this is what happens in all states, it's not just uh, a situation of Italy. And uh, on the other side, I guess that uh, tax authorities and tax government, the government have everybody, not just, uh, you know, the head of the government is very much committed in this regime. And if it starts, it's like in the UK and Portugal, it's a snowball that nobody may wish to, uh, to stop. Person eligible for the regime. <clears throat> Person eligible for the regime are uh, those uh, uh, people who have been resident outside Italy for at least nine out of the last 10 years. What uh, particular of Italy is that uh, the regime is uh, available also to Italian citizens. In the UK, probably not. UK citizens are not allowed to remittance basis because in most cases, UK citizens are considered as domicile, not in all cases, but in some cases. In, the, in Switzerland, Swiss citizens are not allowed to this regime. In Italy, Italian citizens are allowed to this regime, provided that uh, they prove that they have been resident outside Italy for uh, uh, at least nine out of the last uh, 10 years. One question that we see very often is, uh, but uh, I come to Italy, it's fine, but uh, how many days I have to stay in Italy to prove that I'm resident? In principle, known. Because uh, people can come to Italy, register him or herself in their list of resident population, and this is enough to be considered as a tax resident. They can go away. For Italy, they are still resident, for the issue is uh, for foreign countries, whether the foreign countries would still consider him or her resident in the foreign country. Tax authorities don't like it, uh, and uh, in the circular letter they say resident must be actual in Italy because we want to have consumption in Italy, but uh, in principle and then in, in practice they have no element to check it, and I've never seen situation where tax authorities come and say, look, you declare yourself as a resident of Italy, you are paying taxes in Italy, we believe that you are not resident, we give you back taxes, uh, please goodbye, and uh, I think that is very theoretical. People come and pay 100,000. If we have one family member, 100, the second family member, 100, third family member, 100, then this may become very expensive. So then there is the chance to get a discount for any family member. So if I come, for instance, I'm a foreigner, I come into Italy with a spouse and two kids, I can uh, uh, elect either to apply for myself only with the 100,000 regime, or can decide to have the election for all the family member. And then in that situation, I pay 100, my spouse 25,000, and my kids 25,000 each. So the cost is not 400,000 per year, but 175,000 per year. Here the comment, uh, the normal comment, normal question that we receive is, uh, but uh, my spouse has no wealth. Why should I pay the 25,000? My kids are minor kids. Why should I pay the 25,000? And we say it's uh, uh, an opportunity cost. It's a cost. You buy a sort of a policy, a life insurance policy, an insurance policy. Because if in 15 years you want to make a gift or you pass away, your family is in Italy. They have to bother, obviously, of the grief, uh, uh, of the loss uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the uh, family member, but also they have to go away. Otherwise, uh, all the money is subject to full tax regime. Whilst if you are poor for also for the kid for this regime and you pass away, then in that situation, kids can remain under in, at least in a tax efficient uh, regime uh, in Italy for uh, the completion of the 15 year period. We are talking about family members. Family members are not uh, just uh, the spouses uh, and the children, uh, the descendants, brothers and sisters, parents and parents-in-law, sons and daughters-in-law. So it's a very, very broad definition. When to elect uh, a person resident uh, in Dubai for the last 10 years, decided to come to Italy in 2017, 
may decide or to elect for 2017 or even can decide to elect only as of uh, the next year. If uh, it's resident in Italy in 2017, 2018 is still eligible because 2017 is one year resident in the last 10, which is still fine. This is very important. Uh, we have seen especially for French resident because uh, French may like to come to Italy, make a gift to French resident relative members. Under French law, gift tax is due in the state of the Doni. Under the treaty between Italy and France, taxes are due in the state of the Dono. So they come into Italy in 2017, make a gift to a French in 2017, pay in Italy the 4% and elect for the next year in 2018. So this is a typical tax planning structure that we are considering with uh, our French tax colleagues. The law says that the ruling, a ruling must be applied with tax authorities. This was caring uh, for somebody. For, uh, for us, it's a good opportunity to have everything clear in writing. But uh, tax authorities says, notwithstanding the law says the ruling is mandatory, we believe that the ruling is uh, not mandatory, is optional, which this is extraordinary under the Italian system because normally we have a circular letter that interpret the law much strictly. Here we have the other way around. This uh, is the indication that uh, the authorities want to have this scheme very successful and they are moving, adjusting, improving the system in the, go in, in the way forward. The ruling procedure is a ruling just for determining whether the person has been resident in Italy or not in the last uh, uh, 10 years. So typically we apply for non-Italian, for Italian citizens that have certain level of connection with Italy, but we also apply for people that have never put uh, a the fit in Italy in the last 10 years uh, because uh, it's very important that uh, we get uh, a clearance uh, from the tax authorities. Ruling uh, takes 120 days to get it, it's four months, but uh, uh, for non-Italian citizen with uh, uh, nothing, no relationship with Italy, there is really a fast track to obtain uh, that. In the ruling, uh, we have uh, to clarify a number of things, uh, and also we have a, a checklist of 20 factual elements uh, that must be disclosed uh, um, either in the ruling request or on the tax return uh, saying uh, whether there is a connection in Italy. For instance, do you have relatives in Italy? Yes, no, yes. Do you have house in Italy? Yes, no. All this type of stuff. You can imagine that for Italian citizens, this is uh, normally there are a lot of yes, uh, and then uh, tax authorities have to give way to this yes, to understand that it's a yes that is not enough to make the person resident of Italy. Uh, whilst for the non-Italian resident, non-Italian citizen, normally the list is uh, 20 uh, out of 20 of no uh, boxes. That list uh, is uh, quite important uh, because uh, in uh, some situation we see in the international context, uh, it's taken as a model also by other countries and it's taken as a model also by Italy. For instance, if we have a, an Italian citizen living in London to support the residents of London, we have uh, these uh, 20 boxes uh, with Italy, with the UK and with other countries and we want to see whether for instance, if the person is resident of the UK, UK is prevailing over Italy uh, or not. I don't want to expand too much on that, uh, but uh, this is an important point uh, also in the international context. Another important point is treaty benefit. Here I'm entering into a very technical situation. Uh, a UK guy uh, or a French person entrance into Italy, he is entitled to the flat tax regime. But under French tax rules, he can still be considered as a resident of France or some items of income can still be considered as taxable in France, unless treaty applies. So the issue is whether the fact that an individual pays on all what he has abroad, 100,000, is enough uh, to have a, a treaty 
uh, entitlement. Uh, the law uh, is uh, not entirely clear because uh, Article 4 of the OECD Model Treaty specified that a resident of uh, a contracting state, Italy, is not a person who is subject to tax in Italy only with respect to income derived from Italy. So one could say, I pay full taxes on Italian source income, and I pay some taxes, the 100,000 flat, on what I have abroad. Tax authorities have taken the view that uh, the flat tax is still a tax, and therefore they are eligible for uh, the willing to deliver the certificate of residence. Then clearly uh, this is something that Italy says, uh, and then the other state uh, must uh, uh, accept. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, this is uh, uh, quite uh, tricky, and when there are really issues on that, uh, uh, Italians can decide to apply for the flat tax, but for that specific state, uh, because we still have the option to opt out uh, for some states. Uh, for those of you who are familiar, we are talking especially about the Swiss resident person, because under the treaty between Italy and Switzerland, an Italian person uh, is not entitled to, to uh, the application of the treaty if he's not subject to tax in Italy on Swiss source income. So Switzerland is a typical case where we have to opt out, but in that situation, we move all the assets out of Switzerland, and therefore we opt out just for the purpose of residence. We have no income out of Switzerland, but still we are eligible for treaty uh, application. So this is uh, an interesting point because uh, it's tricky. Italy says yes, the other states must accept, and also treaty by treaty must be seen. For those of you who are familiar about that, uh, you should know that uh, Italy, on the other side, is uh, saying that uh, people living in the UK, rising in the UK, but who benefit from uh, the remittance basis are not actual residents in the UK. So it's, it's very contradictory that on one side, uh, Italy is uh, considering that uh, a UK person is not resident uh, for the purpose of the treaty if it benefits from the remittance basis. And on the other side, we accept treaty entitlement for those people who have uh, a system that mirrors the, uh, uh, that regime. So we have still uh, the possibility to uh, opt out, uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, clearly very important. And uh, these slides is very, very important, because uh, uh, people say, OK, I trust the legislation. I trust the Italian, but I don't trust the Italian authorities. Uh, I have uh, my trusts, foundation. I have my holding companies. Then. Uh, tax authorities can say, look, you are totally fine. You don't pay any taxes, but your trust has to pay taxes in Italy. But your holding company has to pay taxes in Italy because you are resident of Italy. The circular letter is dealing with that. And they say that we have to make a distinction. Just to make an example that uh, uh, is, uh, is very realistic in practice, assuming an individual with uh, a BBI company, 100%, with a lot of pieces of art on it. Then uh, the individual comes into Italy and has to determine whether a BBI is a company or a, a disregarded entity. Then uh, tax authorities, they, they are afraid that tax authorities can say the BBI is not a disregarded entity. It's a real entity resident of Italy because you are, you are resident of Italy and you are managing the BBI out of Italy. So tax authorities said, you have two possibilities. First, to say that the BBI company is a disregarded entity. You ask us confirmation, and we'll write that in our view, we confirm that it's disregarded. This means that I have a BBI company disregarded. I have immediately the asset underneath, but the asset underneath a non-Italian base, I don't pay any taxes. If the BBI company is a Luxembourg company owned by adults or a, my personal holding company with a, a lot of assets on it, it's not disregarded, but I still have the chance to get in writing that that company is not resident of Italy for the sole fact 
that the key manager is a, a person that comes to Italy under the flat tax regime. So this is uh, something very interesting that can be put in writing again, and we have uh, this uh, example. So people with the wealth, they come to Italy, they have full clarification in writing, they don't have to bother to restructure their activities uh, and uh, to cancel, dismiss uh, the holding companies, the structure, the trust, and whatever, and they come to Italy very uh, clearly, very easy. So this is the regime uh, uh, under Italian tax law, and uh, uh, um, obviously what's uh, the hope uh, of the authorities is that uh, a lot of people will come into Italy, they will buy a lot of uh, nice properties, and we already see, especially in Milan, that uh, uh, the uh, value of uh, nice properties that are not very common is increasing. There is a lot of research. The standards of foreigners are much higher than the standards of uh, Italian. Uh, we, they expect they will uh, have a, a nice standard of life. They will hire uh, people that uh, will make their life easier, and then uh, everybody will grow around. They will come with family, so we have to invest in foreign schools. Then uh, we'll, uh, they need facilities, and uh, Italy and will uh, do exactly what the uh, UK has done and what uh, Portugal is uh, doing now. For the moment, uh, we, there is no actual number, but uh, there are uh, more than 100 applications in Italy for the moment, uh, and then some rulings already got. Based on uh, what I've heard, uh, 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 for the moment, uh, there are uh, a lot of people in uh, uh, Costa Esmeralda, especially Russian, that uh, they apply for being resident in Costa Esmeralda. Some others in Rome, some others in Venice and Florence. I was born in Rome, so I can say, so these are typical people that are retired. They come in Italy to enjoy their life, and, uh, uh, but uh, the next round will be people that uh, will actually will be active and will work, and then we are seeing a lot of people coming to Milan, Turin, and other countries. We will see, but uh, I'm very, very confident uh, because uh, the regime is uh, uh, coupled by a real uh, change in attitude by the uh, authorities. But uh, fine, we have uh, uh, people, uh, a nice regime, but uh, what about the visa? There was already a discussion this morning about the visa. The visa, is it a nightmare? And uh, the answer is uh, probably yes, unless, unless we have, uh, uh, again, uh, a new legislation on the visa, especially a visa for those people who are coming under the flat tax regime. So uh, there was already discussion this morning. We have the elective uh, residence visa. We have employment, self-employment visas, typical visas. But uh, uh, especially uh, we have uh, the... investor visa, which exists in all countries. The investor visa means that uh, people uh, can, uh, uh, it's a visa that lasts for at least two year period, uh, can review, renew for at least uh, other three years, is not subject to annual immigration quotas, and requires a preliminary filing to a special ministerial committee that uh, makes it very, very simple. The investor visa requires some investments, so not cost investment, unless uh, you think uh, that you are losing uh, the entire value of these investments. An investment in Italian public bonds of at least two millions to be held for at least two years. It's not the best investment, maybe, but still it's a money that can be get back, and then the two-year maturity is different from a 30 or 50-year maturity. An investment of at least one million in the equity of companies established and operating in Italy, investment held for at least two years. A contribution of, of at least one year in a charity based in Italy and engaged in a public interest project. And uh, last but not least, uh, we have uh, the fast track procedure for any type uh, of this uh, visa. Uh, another point of the visa that is very important is for EU nation coming to Italy and normally have uh, 
people helping them at home, home keepers uh, for several years, uh, then uh, there is the possibility also for the home keep housekeepers to come along with them. This is just for the EU national and not uh, for uh, the other people. So this is uh, the presentation out of Italy, comments. The comments are that uh, obviously I'm Italian, I know all uh, uh, what uh, the bad parts of Italy, but uh, there are also good parts. When you live in a country, you focus much more on what doesn't work rather than on what it works. And this happens also for Italians that go abroad. So Italy has a very nice uh, things, and uh, uh, when uh, people have to decide where to go to live, uh, they have to take into consideration their lifestyle. Uh, what we say, considering an ideal world with no taxes, where would you like to live? And then if people say, I like to live in Portugal, fine. I like to live in Switzerland, fine. I live to live in UK, fine. But uh, in my view, it's not acceptable that people that is very wealthy say, I, don't, I, I want to live uh, in a country where uh, I don't pay too much taxes. Clearly, there are people for which uh, the amount of taxes they pay uh, is an impact on their lifestyle, and clearly for them it's, uh, then, uh, it's like you know, living in a bad place, paying taxes is the same. But uh, if they can live in a nice place and pay little taxes, uh, probably is uh, the best uh, of the two solutions. So this is the end of my presentation. I leave the floor for uh, any questions, uh, if uh, any. Sorry, can you say again on the mic? Yeah. Okay, I was uh, referring to scenario where the main applicant died in Italy and his family stays in the country. Do they need to elect a new main applicant to pay one, uh, 100,000 a year? Or do they just pay 25,000 each for the rest of their stay? The, the point is the following. Uh, assuming uh, I make my example, Assuming uh, then I talk about me, assuming that I am uh, from UK, I come with my family and I apply and they decide to apply for me only. I pay 100,000, fine. And assuming that I die after three years, all my wealth uh, goes uh, to my spouse and my kids. And they are resident with me in Italy. Can they apply? No, because they are not meeting the requirements of being a resident outside Italy for at least nine out of the last uh, 10 years, because they already lived three years. But uh, if uh, they apply with me when I come into Italy, and then uh, uh, after three years I die, they are already in the regime, then one is going to pay the 100,000, because it will be the head of the pool, but still uh, for the next uh, 12 years uh, they can live in Italy, they decide what to do, and they are not obliged to leave the country just because otherwise they would have to pay a lot of taxes. The investor visa lasts two years and is renewed for, for three years. What happened after five years? I have been, I've been applying for the flat tax uh, for fi and I would like to, to stay 15 years, uh, but I, my visa expired after five. What, what can I do? After five years, uh, there is the chance uh, to have uh, other visa, to, to renew, uh, then to have uh, another renewal, then, uh, and also to have uh, the European uh, visa, and uh, uh, that allows also to go around uh, the uh, community. But certainly, uh, I, I understand your point. Uh, if the regime works for 15 years and then are eligible to stay in a country just for five years, uh, what happens next? So this is solved. Okay, no questions? Okay, thank you. It was Ludovici Paolo.